Right, hello there. This is the second video about electrolysis. It's a really good idea to make sure you've seen electrolysis one first, which was about molten ionic compounds. In this video, I'm going to cover electrolysis of solutions of ionic compounds, which does get a little bit more complicated. So we'll have a look at the different ions that are present in solution that come from the ionic compound and from the water, because that will split up to give ions as well. I'll have a look at how you predict the product that you get at the anode, how you predict the product at the cathode, and throughout I'll write half equations for you. So copper chloride solution, that is a straightforward example. Um, it's copper 2 chloride, so therefore copper is Cu2+, plus. chloride is Cl-, minus. so we could write its formula as CuCl2, Aq. Now, also present is, of course, water. Now, water will split up to give H plus and OH minus ions. But in this example, we won't worry about those because copper chloride simply splits up to give copper and chlorine. It acts in pretty much the same way as a molten ionic compound would. So the ions, of course, would be randomly distributed throughout the solution, not all there in a the line, but that just makes the diagram a little bit easier. So, of course, as soon as you turn it on, if you've got a bulb, it's going to light, and the positive ions are going to be attracted to the cathode, and the negative ions are going to be attracted to the anode. So the cathode is going to have a coating of a sort of pinky orangey metal, which of course is going to be copper. And what happens here is the Cu2 plus ions become copper, and they do that by gaining two electrons each. So therefore, at the cathode, we have got reduction. Now, at the anode, you are going to see bubbles of gas being produced you'd have to see an awful lot of chlorine to see it as a pale green colour. So let's just put bubbles of gas. You might collect the chlorine by putting an inverted ignition tube, that's a really small test tube that's full of water on top of it, and let the chlorine gas displace the water. And you can test the chlorine gas by putting damp litmus paper in, and damp litmus paper will be bleached. Now, what happens here is the Cr- minus ions become Cl2. Now two chlorines on the right hand side, therefore we need two chloride ions, and they will lose electrons, so two electrons in this case, and that is oxidation. So really quite a straightforward example here, copper chloride solution behaves in exactly the same way as molten copper chloride would. So just to recap, the ions present from the ionic compound are Cu2 plus and Cl minus, but water also becomes H plus and OH minus. Now, of course, the hydrogen ions will be attracted to the cathode as well as the copper ions, and the chloride ions and the hydroxide ions will both be attracted to the anode. And that means that we need to understand how to work out what product you're going to get at the anode and what product you're going to get at the cathode. Now, if your negative ion is a halide ion, so a chloride, bromide or iodide ion, the element that you get produced at the anode, at the positive electrode, would either be chlorine, bromine or iodine. Now, if you've got a negative ion with more than one element in it, like a sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus, or a nitrate ion, NO3 minus, what happens in that case is you get oxygen produced. Now, let's have a think about where these elements come from. Well, for chloride, bromide, or iodide ions, it's reasonably obvious. So, if I take the example of bromide, we get Br minus and they become Br2. So two bromide ions become bromine molecules plus two 
electrons. Now, when we've got sulfate or nitrate ions, for example, it's actually the hydroxide ions from the water that lose electrons. And what happens is we get oxygen gas and water. Now we need to balance this, so we need two H2Os, four OH minuses, and therefore we lose four electrons. And if you check that half equation, it balances in terms of atoms and also in terms of charge. Now the reason for that, so the reason for these different products is that hydroxide ions will lose electrons and therefore be oxidised more easily than sulphate or nitrate ions. And chloride, bromide or iodide ions will lose electrons and therefore be oxidised more easily than hydroxide ions. So at the cathode, the positive electrode, we either get a metal or we get hydrogen gas. Now to work out which you get, you need to look at the reactivity series of the metals. Now the reactivity series of the metals often has hydrogen present, even though hydrogen is a non-metal. Now the rule is, if the metal that's in the ionic compound, the positive ion, is less reactive than hydrogen, you get the metal produced. Now if the metal that forms a positive ion in the ionic compound is more reactive than hydrogen, you get hydrogen produced at the cathode. So when we're looking at a solution of an ionic compound, we use the reactivity series to make the decision as to whether we get a metal or hydrogen produced at the cathode. So let's think about sodium chloride solution. So sodium chloride solution will be NaCl, Aq. Now we've got Na plus ions and Cl minus ions from the sodium chloride. But of course we've got H plus and we've got OH minus ions from the water. So let's put some of these ions into our cell. Now when we connect everything up, the sodium ions and the hydrogen ions are going to be attracted to the cathode. Now think about the reactivity series. Sodium is a lot more reactive than hydrogen, therefore we're going to get hydrogen gas produced. And if you wanted to collect the hydrogen, you could get an ignition tube full of water, invert it on top, let the hydrogen displace the water, and it should burn with a squeaky pop. Now, if we think about the half equation, H plus is going to give us H2. Hydrogen is diatomic. It occurs as molecules of hydrogen. So therefore, 2H plus gives H2. And we're going to have to add our two electrons to make it balanced. So we've got zero charge on both sides to the left-hand side. Now, hydrogen ions gain electrons, therefore they are reduced. And reduction always occurs at the cathode. Now, at the anode, chloride ions and hydroxide ions are both attracted. And chloride ions lose electrons and therefore are reduced more easily than hydroxide ions. So therefore we get bubbles of chlorine gas. Now, if you wanted to collect that, it would, of course, bleach damp litmus paper. And Cl- gives us Cl2. So two chloride ions gives us Cl2 plus two electrons. And therefore, this is oxidation. Now, the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions are both left in solution. Therefore, we get sodium hydroxide produced in solution. So this is an industrial process can be used to produce hydrogen, chlorine, and sodium hydroxide. This is a really, really useful industrial process, which we sometimes call the chloralkali industry because it's used to produce chlorine and sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali. Now let's think about dilute sulfuric acid. Now we'd write that as H2SO4AQ. 
Now, from a sulfuric acid, we get H plus ions, hydrogen ions, and sulfate ions. And from the water, we get, of course, H plus ions. Well, we've got some of those anyway. And OH minus ions. So let me draw those in the electrolysis cell. And of course, remember in the solution, as we know, these ions will be randomly distributed throughout the solution. Now, as soon as we connect this up, hydrogen ions are attracted to the cathode. And there aren't any other ions present. So therefore, we get bubbles of hydrogen gas at the cathode. Now, just thinking about the half equation, H plus gives us H2. We need two H pluses and they gain two electrons, forming hydrogen gas. Now, because we've got electrons being gained, hydrogen ions are being reduced, so this process is reduction. If we focus our attention then on the anode, so the positive electrode, well, sulfate ions and hydroxide ions are attracted, but hydroxide ions, in this case, lose their electrons more easily, therefore are oxidised more easily than sulphate ions. So at the anode, we get bubbles of oxygen gas. So if you collected the oxygen gas, it would relight a glowing splint. Now remember, it's the hydroxide ions that are attracted and are oxidised, and they give us H2O and O2, and we get two oxygens, Four hydroxide ions are required, and therefore we've got five electrons being lost. And because we've got loss of electrons, this is oxidation. So that's the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid, sometimes called acidified water, where we get hydrogen and we get oxygen. Let's move on to copper sulfate solution. So we could write the formula as CuSO4. AQ. So therefore, from the copper sulfate, we've got Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus. And from the water, we've got H plus and we've got OH minus. So let me just show those in the solution. So as soon as we connect everything up, copper ions and hydrogen ions are attracted to the cathode and sulfate ions and hydroxide ions are attracted to the anode. Well, let's talk about the cathode first. Well, copper is less reactive than hydrogen, therefore we get a coating of a pinky orangey metal, which of course is copper. Now, at the cathode, copper ions gain electrons forming copper, so Cu2 plus plus 2E minus gives us Cu. And of course, whenever we've got gain of electrons, this is reduction. Now, if we turn our attention to the anode, well, sulfate ions and hydroxide ions are attracted. Now, hydroxide ions lose their electrons and are therefore oxidised more easily than sulfate ions. So therefore, we get bubbles of oxygen gas. Now, remember, our half equation is like this. OH minus gives O2 plus H2O, we get two H2Os, therefore we need four OH minuses, and we get four electrons, and that therefore is oxidation. Now if we think about what's left in solution here, well, of course our H plus ions and our SO42 minus ions are there. Now H plus and SO42 minus is going to give us H2SO4, so we're going to get sulfuric acid in solution, and that solution would turn universal indicator or blue litmus paper red. OK, so that's copper sulfate solution for you. OK, so that's electrolysis of solutions of ionic compounds, hopefully made simple. Thanks for listening.